All right. Good evening. I'd like, um, like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, February 1st, 2024 Planning Board meeting. If we could all raise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Inter introduction to board members. To my far left is Don Ganarelli, Jerry Graybill, Paul Amatucci, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, and Rick Raines. We also have James Bellissimo, the town manager, Terry Wilson, assistant to coding and planning, uh, and Hannah Watson via Zoom for planner from SMPDC. All right, first things first is the public hearing for land use ordinance amendments. If anyone wants to come up and speak, feel free. Hey, good evening. My name is Michael Wright. I live at 103 Cemetery Road. And um, I'm on the uh, Comprehensive Plan Review Committee and the Open Space Committee. So uh, I want to thank the board and the planning department for uh, keeping a good eye on a land use ordinance and interpreting it and, and uh, generally doing a pretty good job, I, I'd say. Um, and uh, I'm happy to uh, make some comments at this public hearing. Um, generally, I'm pretty, I don't have a lot to say about the changes that are proposed. I would like to uh, address the uh, uh, residential growth limitations. Um, and uh, um, uh, number E, for determining the number of permits to be issued if the parcel is split or conveyed into two or three, uh, two parcels three years prior to the application of subdivision, the number of permits will be issued based on the parent parcel. Each uh, subdivision will be issued only in the changes from three to four permits per year even if the parent parcel is located in two or more zones, including overlay zones, unless the subdivision is served by uh, public water and public sewer. Um, I think we all know that uh, the uh, growth rate in town is a, a concern to a lot of people. I get a lot of comments from folks saying that there are too many permits being issued. This is something that the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee is looking into and addressing. And um, I think that uh, my recommendation would be that before we make any changes, we wait for the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee to make its recommendations uh, rather than going into this at this time. <clears throat> In uh, subdivision regulation amendments, um, 11 Point 18, impact on natural beauty, aesthetics, historic sites, wildlife habitat, rare natural areas, and public access to the shoreline, the retention of open space and natural and historic features. I would suggest that the number four read, the subdivision shall reserve no less than 15% of undeveloped land to provide for the recreation needs of the occupants <clears throat> and ought to maintain the scenic and natural beauty of the area and ought to protect habitats. <clears throat> um, uh, I, I suggest that no less than 15% because I think that you could be presented with a case where it might make sense to preserve more than 15%. Maybe you have a proposal where there is a important wetland, uh, critical habitat that is 20% of the property, and uh, it would make more sense to protect the entire uh, wetland than just 15%. <coughs> also, when you're considering wetlands, it's also important to have upland buffers to protect the wetland as well. And um, I'm also concerned about what the mechanism for enforcing this is. I'm on the board of directors of Great Works Regional Land Trust, 
and we have uh, worked with planning boards and towns and developers uh, protecting conservation land for subdivisions. And uh, we've had the experience where uh, some of the uh, residents think that recreation includes driving Jeeps up and down stream beds and getting unstuck there and abandoning them. So uh, it's the, a cons I don't know what the mechanism for enforcing these um, protections would be. Great Works Regional Land Trust has decided that we will no longer uh, accept cons conservation easements on the protected properties. We now require that it's uh, a fee-held property owned by the land, land trust. And uh, we also uh, encourage the developer to um, donate a conservation uh, stewardship fee that's used by the land trust to hire professional staff to monitor the properties regularly and take action if there's a violation. So I would recommend some type of mechanism for enforcing the protection of these properties and uh, maybe even limiting, limiting recreation uh, to critical habitats to uh, passive recreation. Uh, on uh, 12 and number three, wildlife habitat, rare natural areas, uh, public access to shorelines. Um, uh, we tend to be retention of open space and natural or historic features. Uh, the sub number one, the subdivision shall receive, and I'm going to recommend again, no less than 15% of the area of the <coughs> subdivision is open space in order to provide for the recreational needs of the occupants of the subdivision. I think that, again, you might be presented with a case what makes more sense to protect more than 15% of a particular proposal. And um, I like the new performance standard state law for, um, for uh, uh, identifying farmlands. Uh, farmland is a natural resource that you cannot recreate. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. And as we all know, no farms, no food. So, and uh, I think that would be uh, beneficial to the town to take efforts to uh, protect farmland and ensure it for future farmers and food production. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm Pat Bovair at Six Country Lane, <coughs> and um, I was excited to see that um, the 11.8 and 12.3 were in here because I know that um, the open space group, of which I am not a real active member, but I am a member of, um, uh, is, seems to be making some impact um, uh, even before our new comprehensive plan comes out. Um, there's been a lot of work um, since the comprehensive plan groups are meeting, and I know the plan I don't think goes through until 2025, but um, there are a lot of changes that um, we want to make sure um, do not uh, go against the comprehensive plan that exists today, um, and then we'll wait and see what the people vote on in 2025. Um, so my biggest concern is um, see, the growth, um, 6.3.1. Um, so um, to me, there are two things going on in this um, in this change. One is just a clarification for something that has been on the books for 20 or 30 years, and that was that each subdivision shall be issued a certain number of permits per year. It was three. 
and I think it's great that that was clarified rather than to be each zone because originally that was not the intent. The intent was for each subdivision to be issued three permits per year. So I'm very happy to see that you've decided to clarify that um, until I know this, um, you're planning on rewriting this whole part, right, 6.3.1. Um, so um, the part I'm most that I'm concerned about is the changing from three to four permits. Um, I feel that at that at this point, having the comprehensive plan that we have now, that is championing championing the rural character of Berwick, and I think the future comprehensive plan is doing that also. Um, that I feel like raising the number of permits for uh, development um, is actually against the comprehensive plan as it exists today. Um, I was concerned because um, I feel like all these groups now are working toward our new comprehensive plan to improve and whatever, improve that and then present it to the people to vote on. Uh, we have spent a lot of money with uh, Southern Maine Regional Planning. There's been grant money and town money that's been used for that. Um, like I said, as being a member on some of these committees, um, the emphasis is to ensure the rural character of Berwick, which seems to be what's special about Berwick. And we want to make sure that that um, continues. Um, so I feel like um, all of this effort is being spent to support the rural character of Berwick. And then I feel like um, when I watched the planning board meeting, because I wasn't there, I watched the planning board meeting where this was decided to change this to four permits. I feel like the planning board, it seems this would speed up development by increasing the number of permits. And um, something that um, is kind of opposite of what the rest, the rest of the emphasis in town is. I feel like one arm of the town doesn't know what the other arm is doing. <laughs> I feel like, um, you know, one is striving hard to keep Berwick like the people have wanted and the comprehensive plan have wanted to be the rural character of Berwick. We know we need development, but we need, don't need development in the rural parts of Berwick. Um, so my idea is to um, either break this into two parts and um, keep the clarification in there that the um, that it's for subdivision and not per zone so the way it has been treated all this time but do not make any changes about the number of permits um, because really increasing the number of permits um, is not supported by the comprehensive plan at this point if that's the way the comprehensive plan wants to go in 2025, then that's fine. But right now, I don't feel like that um, is in keeping with what's going on. I believe that we should wait for any actual change, not clarification necessarily, but like I said, there are two parts to this. But for any change to this, I believe that um, we need to wait for the rewrite. You're going to be putting this in front of the townspeople um, whenever this is, and then within a year or something, however long it takes to do the rewrite, you're going to be presenting it again in a, in a different form, maybe changing it again and that kind of thing. I feel like that's not appropriate. I feel like the townspeople are going to feel like, oh, we already voted on this. You know, they're not going to understand the big picture. So I think they're waiting for the rewrite and also the rewrite that might be supporting the new comprehensive plan is a smarter move um, than to be making a change at this point 
when, um, you know, a, when all that's needed for this is a clarification. So I feel that um, when I know the second part of this is you guys going into some kind of a meeting where you decide whether you're going to accept or reject these. Um, I'm hoping that um, when you go to that active part of your meeting, that um, someone on the planning board will propose to table this um, this 6.3.1, and um, either all of either one the one part where the, it's three or four three to four permits, or the whole thing if we need to. Um, and I know I think if someone votes to table, you all have to vote on that, and you know that's okay. That's the way things work. Um, but in that way, if you table this, then you will be waiting for the rewrite, which I think will express more what the town wants for the future growth, for a residential growth limitation. I think, um, I feel like um, it's something that requires a lot of thought, and I, I think maybe this going from three to four um, was done um, you know, for one purpose, but I think another, I think it can end up creating more permits <coughs> than originally planned for our future, and we don't know when the rewrite is going to be. So based on the 1982 um, state law that says that all land use ordinances must conform to an approved comprehensive plan to be enforceable, um, I feel like um, this three to four permits is asking for a change that is not consistent with our comprehensive plan by because it allows increased development with, because it allows for increasing the amount of development. So when the town votes on the new comprehensive plan, um, then we will need to see if the change and, and a change like this in the ordinance would agree with the new comprehensive plan. So as of right now, I feel like it, it is not something that the comprehensive plan supports, and therefore I don't think it should be changed until the rewrite when it can be thought out entirely. Sorry if I did a lot of repeating. But... Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, Dennis Jackson, 8A Goodwin Street, Berwick. Um, and thank you for holding this meeting and um, um, trying to make our land use ordinance more of a living document than um, just something on the shelf. Um, um, I also want to speak to um, item 6.3.1E, and I, along with Michael and Pat, I agree that, um, you know, changing the number of permits from three to four is maybe not a timely thing to do, given that we're working on both an open space plan and a comprehensive plan and that uh, waiting for those uh, to mature further before um, reaching and uh, making this particular decision. Um, I, I think it's just fine about the clarifying about whether it's in two more zones. That seems perfectly reasonable to go ahead with, but to make the change from three to four, I think, um, should wait. Um, and then I also like to um, speak. Let's see what's that one. Um, yeah, on um, subdivision regulation amendments, um, 8, 11 .8 and uh, twelve point three. I think Michael's correct in pointing out that it'd be wise <coughs> to make this uh, a minimum of fifteen percent for each of those items. 
um, not give the impression that 15% is an exact amount. Uh, and, in, um, and then I also um, want to offer a clarification on the de definition of steep slopes. Now, um, there, but, um, the proposed definition is for 15%, which is a 15-foot rise over 100 feet. But to me, um, it's a missing factor here is over what horizontal scale are we applying this? Um, you know, one would think that dealing with land use planning, you know, something larger, like um, maybe 40 feet uh, horizontally, you know, roughly the size of a house, that um, might be a, a, a scale. Um, what the exact scale is, um, I don't have a strong opinion on, but it, it should be something. You know, like on the extreme example, if you take the definition of 15% as a 15-foot rise over a 100-foot distance, if you you can do the same thing and say, okay, 15% is also a horizontal distance of one foot and a 0.15-foot rise. I mean, that's that's actually like about an inch and a quarter. So... That's my, my point is that if you just apply 15%, well, how do we measure that on the ground? What's important? So by having a, a reasonable scale over which you look at it, you get rid of the things that are irrelevant to the process, and you just look at what's important for making the decisions. <clears throat> so... Looking online, I see that those some um, jurisdictions like take like a two foot contour map and count five contour lines and measure that distance. So five contour lines on a two foot map that's an eight foot <coughs> vertical rise, and the number works out to be fifty three point three feet. And that would give you a fifteen percent slope, or you could have four contour lines which would give you a six-foot rise, and that would work out to 40 feet. So something along that line, I think, should be in the definition to make it more workable and that a surveyor would know what to do with it. And that's my comments. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. <coughs> Terry, did we have anyone uh, email or mail us about their public comment? I have no public comments. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll make a motion that we close this public hearing. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Uh, next is the first public comment. Okay, closing the first public comment. No approval of minutes, no old business, no new business. Second public comment. Okay, close that. Uh, land use ordinance amendments. All right. So I guess we'll start with... 11.84, uh, no less than 15%. Should we add the no less for that and the 12.3? I mean, no less or a minimum of, I think either either or yeah. works. Just okay. decide which one we like better. I think a minimum. Minimum. That way, minimum that, of. If you say a minimum of, it kind of plants that seed that you would like to see more. More. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's a little more forward leaning okay. than yeah, saying no less than. Yeah, I like minimum of. Yep. Point well taken. Does it require a motion or we can just draft it? Yeah, we can. We're, we'll okay. just uh, go through the whole thing. Okay, great. Right. 
that, and then comes down to the three or four permits. So the idea of the changing of the three to four permits was to basically, with a minor subdivision, it's four lots. So we're trying to update that so if with the infrastructure that's needed, instead of having three lots being developed and then the infrastructure could, could be basically on hold for the fourth lot, this kind of ties it all together so they can be all one and done instead of having to wait the next year to build that infrastructure and that fourth lot. Can we I, I do recall that discussion right. and uh, based on uh, some testimony provided this evening, um, I, I think we need to be really sensitive about not disenfranchising uh, some of our folks who are working very hard on the comprehensive plan. Um, and, and I do agree that they should be working in parallel and not conversely. Um, I just want to offer that food for thought and maybe spark additional discussion. I mean, I, I did not have all the information when we, we did have that discussion, but being provided with, with this new information, I, I do feel like we should be operating in parallel because we have a hard enough time getting people to volunteer on these boards within our community, and if we're alienating them and not taking that input, I, I think it does a disservice to the process as a whole. Agreed. Can I offer a, a clarification if I'm correct? Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely appreciate everybody's uh, opinions and agree with them if we were, in fact, increasing the number of permits for those subdivisions and really we're not. They're still going to get all four of their permits, whether they get them three in one year and one the next year. If it's a four-lot subdivision, they're going to get their four permits. Our goal, I think, here was that instead of stretching it out over a two-year period where three houses are built one year and the fourth one, which they would get the next year, continues the construction for a longer period of time, I think our goal was that let's try to get all four of those, um, you know, small subdivision done in a year so that any neighbors don't have to put with, put up with trucks and noise and construction over a two-year period year. as opposed to a one-year period. <clears throat> so if, if you have a four-lot subdivision, you're going to get your four permits. And you're just going to get them all in one year instead of three in one year, and one in the next. That, in my opinion, is what our thought process was. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and, you know, just uh, following up on this, Rick, I, I also believe that, you know, when we, uh, these are all approved. These are houses that people are going to move into, and these are probably pre-purchased already. And you're just waiting for that, that house to be built so they can move in. And you're delaying people from moving in but they're going to move in, and that is part of of the growth that has been approved for that that uh, four unit uh, so subdivision. So, so I think this just makes it easier for builders to not stretch it out, and uh, and it doesn't harm in any way the fact that those houses are going to be built. It's just when they're going to be built. And uh, I, I think f going from three to four is not a heavy lift. I also think it's important to clarify that if it was a five-lot subdivision, that becomes a major subdivision. And that has a different set of, of, of clarifications Correct. and whatnot. Well, right. So it's our goal was to look at this as a four-lot small subdivision and how can we consolidate that into a year as opposed to two do we do we need to because i watched the last meeting do we de need to delineate between a four lot subdivision and this you know separated out put the wording in here yeah yes mm -hmm. I'm, I'm for that you know, yeah. I'm definitely for that i so think that's the way to major go. subdivisions just for the and that keeps us small i think i think that keeps us in line with the comprehensive plan it all we're changing so, is a so subdivision a small subdivision 
because they're going to get their permits anyway, like you said. Okay, so you're basically saying add the wording so it would be four permits on a minor subdivision, subdivision. and then keep three, three for to four the major. On, yes. Does that does that sound? It makes sense. We can we can see how it how it check with our legal and see if it sticks. Yeah. Okay. Do we have proposed verbiage for that? Um, so maybe what, each, what do we each want minor subdivision like? shall be issued four, only four. Um, we're up to four. We're up to four. Yeah. And then major subdivision would, would stay with three per year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that way, that which is would, where it is now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the other part just clarifies. Yeah. I think sometimes there might be some confusion on. <clears throat> oh, they're they're allowing more permits than they should. It's really they're the permits are going to be issued no matter what. Right, right. It's a matter of when they get issued. Exactly. Well, to play devil's advocate on that notion, I would say, in alignment with the comprehensive plan, just mm -hmm. hearing what our townspeople are saying to us. Yes, is it is it more administratively arduous on the builder? Certainly. Um, would it possibly? have a developer, you know, they're going to gear up to build these three houses. And if they have to go back in a year to gear up again, that, that is a natural check valve for slowing growth, which is, I think, what what we're being told, that the, that the people want and that the comp plan wants. So I just, I want us to be sensitive to that fact. Oh, that, no, you know, we're, we are making it easier for a developer to come in and, okay, I'm going to bang out four houses. Right now, the way it's written... Yes, could they go back and get a permit? Sure, they can. It's going to cost them more money, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to do it, and it might be a natural check valve to support that, you know, limiting growth that, that we're looking for, that, that the people of the town are telling us they want. So just food for thought mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. I think that's very possible, um, and I'm not arguing against it, but I also think that if I was a developer and was going to make a four-lot subdivision, I'm committed to all four lots on my line items so that I'm going to make money at the end of four lots. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that I would give up a whole lot just because it's a year later. Personally, I would I would still commit to building that extra lot, and now it means, again, another year of noise and construction in the neighborhood. Um, but well, I'm open to it also could include potential increase of costs I mean sure especially after COVID the cost of building has increased which, drastically which is a check valve for growth right <clears throat> so I just I, I, I want us to be how about this all, James all throw your opinion out here do you feel that the change from three to four permits does not meet the comprehensive plan <laughs> I think, um, it, like what Phil's saying, it has, a, it has a potential to incentivize different types of growth that we haven't seen. Um, obviously, three to four, I was talking to Taylor a little bit about this. It, it could have a pretty marginal impact, or it could really, Phil, you're right, you hit the nail on the head about just in terms of when you talk about scale and the ability to develop. You know, well, you the, think about how many four, think about how many develop developers we have, right? Working in the town, building homes. If if we're limiting or or causing them to have to put one in the hopper and wait a year, that that is limiting growth, which is kind of the point of the comp plan, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I'm, I could be. I could I'm right on the fence here, right? Yeah. So I'm a fe so. <clears throat> yeah. Short answer is I don't think it's against the comprehensive plan, but. I would lean to agreeing that it's a big enough change that it probably makes sense to hold off until there's like a more comprehensive because a lot of this stuff, open space planning and R3 planning, there, it, there will be a slew of comprehensive changes that will be coming down the pike in the next couple of years. So well, based on that input from our own town manager, I, I would make a motion that we table it until we get the draft of the comprehensive plan and we do that in parallel. That way it's it, we're not pitting one against the other. I would um, ask to maybe modify that motion and include the, the new definition of not having extra permits per zone but rather per subdivision which I think clarifying that is important. Mm -hmm. And that was yeah. the first main 
purpose of redoing that particular line. Um, but I think that I'm also in favor of what you say about let's not make changes to the number until we're all on the same page. So what does that motion sound like? That motion sounds <laughs> like I would make a motion to table the change of numbers of permits, however, keep the new definition of um, a subdivision getting a set number based only on how many subdivisions there are, not how many zones it may be in. So I will rescind sense. my previous motion and defer to yours, and I will second. Hold on, hold on. We wouldn't be tabling. We would just be striking it out. There's no need yeah. to table anything. No. Like this, no. no. If we table it, then perfect. Yeah. Strike it out. Yeah. yeah leave it out. as is. So leave it as is until the. Well, no. We need. No, it. We, we need. We do need the it. clarification of. And what was the thing we? We we wordsmith that to clarify something, and I forget. I, I just want to make sure we're not missing that. It's the amount of zones. Uh, basically, the what you guys are talking about sub striking out is each subdivision shall be issued only three, so that would stay mm -hmm. permits per year. The thing that's added is even if the parent parcel is located in two or more zones, including overlay zones, unless the division subdivision is served by public water and public sewer. So you're just taking yeah. that whole thing out. No, you just no. Take, we're just striking out. Yeah, just keeping, the keeping rest. it. Okay, yeah. okay. Which is a change in of itself. Okay. Does that and uh, I guess I'm the contrarian here. Uh, I think going from three to four is not a significant difference. And particularly in this environment where housing is way short in the entire entirety of the country and your county in particular, uh, it, uh, these houses will be sold, all four of them will be sold with people waiting to get into them. So uh, making them wait an extra year or however that math works out for them, I don't think does any good. Um, it does not put a limit on uh, on growth at all. Uh, if we approve it here as a four unit, those four units will be built, whether this year or next year. So people will move in and there will be growth, at least four new units. So uh, I'm not sure that we're we're really doing anything here. So one, one way that it may have an impact though is if I'm a developer and I'm looking at putting in a four unit subdivision, but I'm only going to get three permits and I got to wait another year for the fourth one, I may just bring it down to a three unit subdivision and that yeah. fourth house is eliminated, which, which slows growth. Which slows growth. That's, that's right. where I'm, that's well, my thought process yeah. as well. Question, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate here because when I developed my subdivision down in Georgia, we, all the infrastructure was put in for all lots. They only gave us X amount of permits per year, but that was all done in one year. So the only thing you had to worry about was just that the next bunch of houses being built. It really didn't affect anything in development of the subdivision. We did all that. So, yeah, I agree. Roads were put in all the yeah. way to the end. Yeah, do it. You're not going to, I mean, building a house is not going to, yeah, it's going to be. You know, I put up with it in my subdivisions I lived in down there. It's going to happen because it is growth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to happen a little slower than you might want it to, but you just got to deal with it. It does slow the growth, though. It does. I think we're all right. in agreement that it slows the growth, which is in alignment with what the townspeople are asking us to do and correct. what the comp plan is trying to do. So I don't think it's going to change anything. <clears throat> So I would advocate for keeping it the way it is. If, if we're in agreement that it doesn't change anything, then let's keep it the way it is and develop it in parallel with the comp plan. Yeah. If, if we're in agreement. Yeah. Do we need a motion to do anything about that? I think so. So I'll make a motion that we have changed the number from four to three, but keeping the definition of per subdivision as opposed to per zone. I will second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. All against? Okay. So we will uh, strike that out. <clears throat> then the next is the steep slope definition. Yeah. Uh, what horizontal scale is being used? When I read it, it the horizontal scale. 
It's right on definitions, right there. Oh, there we so, go. Yep. Yeah. James, do you have any input to add on that? It's way over my head. I, but um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. To be honest with you, I don't. Maybe Jerry, well, the engineer in the room. I know what you're saying. It, and then if you have to define it to a uh, surveyor or something to come back, you need something more than this. Yeah, I think is what he's saying. I don't know what that more is, but. Let's ask Hannah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your input on this? I would agree. I would be more, but I don't know what the more is. Um, I would probably just defer to reading what other ordinances define it as um, and look for other language. Okay. So or if we, there's kind of a standard engineering... So which We're on a time crunch for this because it we have to vote on this tonight. Okay. Um, I can, can look at other ordinances while I sit here. Okay. <laughs> you have until the 15th to finalize. Okay. So we don't have to vote on it today? You can vote on it the 15th. Okay. Does Do we have a town engineer that could chime in? Okay. That, that we, I, can... we can probably find whether it's like a planning dictionary or... Okay. We got we some can do a little civil research. engineers in our office. I can ask them tomorrow how they see this and what their definition is. And send that around to everybody. Yeah, I like to look that. Okay. Yeah, that's a great I'll send idea. it to I Irish like and Terry, and then they can disperse it. Okay. Okay. Let me see what I can find tomorrow. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're not voting on it tonight, then. <laughs> okay. uh, yep. Terry? Back on this. They ask about enforcing this. Oh, yeah. So the... Do we want to add something? What... So, question about enforcement of the protection of recreational land. I know one of the mechanisms is there's homeowners associations that are that are responsible. In some cases, it's you know if we need to protect open space, it's code enforcement. Um, but I think it opens up a whole other uh, discussion that we're probably not ready to have. That's much more involved in terms of the use of the open space. So we should work on that for the next vote. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. The, the, okay. the only thing I can offer you guys on that from being out of state and developing was we had open space in our developments <coughs> down in Georgia also, and the homeowners association was the one that told you what you could and could not do on that land, on that open space, and usually that's where they come into play. Okay. I think you'll see some recommendations from Open Space, the Open Space Committee as well, mm -hmm. some of those mechanisms on recommended uses, restrictions, enforcement, maintenance. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say I imagine that it can get convoluted because number 12.3 also talks about public access to a shoreline. If that's in open space, like what's private, what's public, who gets to decide what, and, and if the Open Space Committee takes all that into consideration and has input for us, then I think we wait for that. I do like the 15% number as a start mm -hmm. if not higher mm -hmm. yeah like 25 yeah as a minimum yeah yes minimum. yeah i like that yeah. too a minimum of i mean if you're yeah. taking it do we want a half add? acre lot house size and you're putting it into like a cluster subdivision that's less than an acre per house you've just freed up an acre and a half times however many houses plus the extra space generally speaking <clears throat> there's quite a bit of extra yeah. space so we did recommend putting that verbiage in 11.84 uh, to say a minimum of 15%. Minimum. Do okay. we want to do that here as well? Yes. And yeah, yeah. Yes. When, I, when okay. we discussed that, I was talking about both. Both, both. okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I like yes. it. Yeah. All right. It's a starting Thank you. point. Yeah. And to go off on what Rick was just saying, I, I, me and James have had some discussions about the 15%, and at a certain scale – it feels like it's a lot because if you're subdividing 100 acres now you're talking 15 acres i mean that is a lot of land if you're talking four acres five acres like you said it's not that much so i 
I think what James and I discussed, we kind of felt that 15 was like the middle grounds for it, where I feel like maybe leaning more towards the future that we try to discuss more of the scalability Correct. aspect of it. Um, yeah. That's just how yeah. I felt on right that. Right now it's good the way we have it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the way we're proposing. Yeah. All right. And then James added a couple things. Um, one was the affordable housing developments um, that meet the requirements for 30A MSRA. 4364 are allowed to have a dwelling unit density of at least two and a half times the base density that is otherwise allowed in that location. So that's just from the state, right? That's part of LD 2003. Okay. Same with 7.8. It pretty much says the most we can require for off-street parking for affordable housing developments is two spaces, two parking spaces per three dwelling units. Okay. So it's like point six 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 seven parking spaces per dwelling unit two-thirds of a parking Thank spot you. <laughs> Thank you. it's a, a, nice it's a much more concise way of saying drive a smart car and then so it was those two things and then that was oh and the added affordable housing in the definitions is just C definition on 30A MSRA yeah. 4364. Just references the law in case they decide to change definition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. I guess moving on, uh, informational items. So we're banning utility poles. Oh, yeah, sorry. Back back to the uh, land use ordinance. Utility poles, uh, it was changed to commercial signs are not allowed on utility poles. That would be enforceable by code enforcement. Um, I like that. I mean, CMP owns those poles anyway, so we shouldn't be, they don't want anything on those poles anyways. And non-commercial items like yard sales and stuff like that, I feel that, you know, Usually pe the people take them off, but yep. sometimes they stay a little bit longer, but they still fall off yep. pretty easily. <coughs> so uh, are we okay on Sweetser Street with the speed bump sign on the utility pole? Yeah, I think it's mostly about commercial business. Business signs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. like yeah. lawn care yeah. signs or the solar signs or just okay. examples. Well, we need that sign, trust me. Or you could just put a post in. Put a post on the sign. Well, yeah. we can do that if we need to. Yeah, yeah. town could do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, the Make it comply. Is, yeah, part of the reason they didn't is because I brought up a chain, uh, a point with the gentleman that lives in the house right there, has a fence up right now on his lot line, and you you would not be able to cut the grass back there if, mm. on the other side of it if you put the, a sign pole up. But we could always put one up right in front of the pole if we needed to be, yeah. and we'd be fine. But yeah. I think for now. As long as nobody says anything, I think we're fine. Okay. And then, James, do you know if the town attorney, he's has he looked at this? Not yet. Okay. No. All right. I was just going to ask about the illuminated vehicle mounted signs. I mean, I just want to make sure it's okay. I don't know if, if he's going to. Yeah, it's just we're talk talking with Irish. Just we we'll see we see okay. if we can do it. Okay. If it becomes if it's a parked illuminated sign, does it fall under land use? It might. Right. But we'll we'll confirm that. I I think I mean maybe add the verbiage when it's parked at for more than ten minutes. Or when it's parked at the um the actual store the or the business that it's located at. Yeah, right. I think even then, though, people, like the Domino's guy will pull in, run inside, get the next order, come back out and leave again. He's there three minutes. Does he have to turn the sign off and turn it back on? Maybe. If yeah. We're, I mean, and, and you're right. Sometimes it's three minutes. Sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes it's an hour. And at that point, like, there's no other businesses on the, on the lit. downtown area that have any lit up signs. Yeah. I mean, at that point, if they're allowed to, then 
let's say Bad Wolf Butcher, they put it on their cars right. that they want illuminated signs on their cars, and yeah, right. then well, there, Primal you, Fitness <laughs> wants it on theirs. But if you go to Portland or Boston, right, they, they can't have billboards. So what do they do? They got those big trucks that drive around with the mobile billboards. Right. Yeah. So I I think, in my opinion, that is probably a loophole somewhere that we would not be able to legally enforce. Yeah. I, I could be mistaken, yeah. but. Well, we we'll see. We'll see what Phil says, and we'll go from there. Right. Yeah. And uh, next meeting, we'll talk more about it. Sounds good. Okay. It has to be enforceable as well. So when you talk about minutes, you know, 10 minutes versus 30 minutes. Right. Who's going to keep track? Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it this way. It's just like our sound ordinance. That's a 15-minute consecutive sound that has to happen. You know, who's going to stand there with a stopwatch being like, it's been 16 and a half minutes. I mean, there probably is people that will do that, but <laughs> it has to be consecutive sound, though. So it's like you have, you're going to be resetting that clock a lot, like especially if it's a dog that's barking or, or gunshots that are happening because, you know. Dog barking. All right. What do you got to do is put a camera after and record it. I guess that's sure. it for the land use ordinance amendments for now. Um, we will vote on them next meeting. Next is informational items. Uh, you check out Moulton Street. Um, a lot of trees were taken down today. It's part of a major infrastructure project. Um, Moulton Street is being completely reconstructed along with parts of 1st, 2nd, and Copeland Street. All new stormwater infrastructure. It's actually in front of the planning board few months ago. Uh, that also establishes a river, riverfront park called Great Falls Park. Yeah. So it's exciting. It's are been they dropping nice. timber there now? Is that where they're? Yep. Oh, wow. Well. Yep. Trees are being dropped. Uh, there's a ton of landscaping that's involved with the park once it's established. So it's a project six can years in the making. About that? You can ask, I can talk I mean, to you. I didn't know. Oh, I can talk to you. I'm just sure. sharing the good news. That's all. <laughs> that's all I have. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Okay. If there are no further items for discussion from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, good night. Before you leave, I'd like to make a point.